Nick Spikes. Hello, my name is Stéphane Melanson, aka Dr. Bass, and uh, today I will uh, present you the uh, nice adapter controller uh, that is installed on that really nice, beautiful Nick Spike. So um, today we will proceed with the uh, setup and then the uh, fine tuning. Okay, so once you have installed the controller on the uh, bicycle, the first thing you need to do is to go in the battery setting. So you need to go in the uh, BMS setting. So first you will go on the controller and then you will go on the menu and then select the last option, which is battery setup. So select this option and then you'll have another menu. On that menu you will have BMS enable. You will select yes. Then you will go on the second uh, option, which is BMS setup. So in the BMS setup, you select it, and then you will have the first line, which is channel A configuration. You will select that configuration, and then you will have another menu, which is showing a number of cells per each group of the BMS. The BMS is divided in multiple uh, boards, so you will have to indicate that the first board has four cells. Here is why. The NYX bike battery pack is composed of 20 cells in series and each of these cells have 20 amperes. So the BMS is composed of little board that have each four cells that are able to manage. So you will select four cells for the first bank which is full and then on the second bank you will select four and you will do the same until you go to the five uh, the bank number 5 and you will select 4 again. So we will have the 5 bank selected with 4 cells each for the level of 20 cells. Once this is done, you exit that menu and you will go on the third option on the BMS setup which is cell V configuration. Now you will select custom on the first option which is cell chemistry and then you go on the next option which is the maximum voltage of the cell for this cell you will select 4.15 volts so I'll do that then on the minimum you will select 3 volts and then you will have the balancing option this is the voltage where the uh, BMS will begin to balance I suggest selecting about uh, 4.14 or 4.13. This is the uh, best option for those uh, cell chemistry. And then you have the last option in the volt menu, which is critical. This is the voltage at which the controller will just cut. Okay? You want to protect the cells, you don't want to over uh, discharge them. So you will select 2.5 volt. And then you exit that menu and um, we'll just see in the uh, last option of the BMS setup which is called battery monitor you select it and you shall have all the voltages of the cells that are indicated you will see all the voltage of each bank and you will have um, five banks showing each the voltage of the cells if everything is set right you shall see uh, the voltages of all the cells in that menu so that's all for the uh, BMS uh, uh, battery setting. Okay, and the uh, BMS setup, the uh, third option is the uh, battery hampers. In the case of the uh, NYX battery pack, this is 20 amperes that you want to select. So just raise that value to 20.0. And then the fourth option is the battery watt hour. Uh, in that case, it's uh, 1000 480 the uh, official value so it's the value of the nominal cell voltage which is 3.7 time uh, the number of cell time the 20 amperes value and then the uh, discharge cutoff voltage this will protect your battery against over, over discharge 
So uh, this is the uh, uh, the voltage, the low voltage of the battery of each cell. This is this is about 3.3 volt time 20, which is 66 volt. So you indicate that value right here. And then in the uh, second page of the uh, BMS setup, you will go to the high voltage cutoff. So when you regen, the motor produces a voltage and a power and you want to uh, avoid the battery to overcharge when the battery is fully charged and you use the regen. So in that case, the voltage is 83 volt with the uh, next battery pack. So just write that value to 83, just like that. 83.2 or 83, uh, there is a value uh, that you can choose between that value, uh, close to that value. And then the uh, VSoft limit, you can leave it at about 0.8 volt, it will be fine and uh, have a smooth cutoff for that. So that's all for the BMS setup. Okay, so in your controller you can also install various chargers. Uh, the charger that is supplied with the uh, Nix bike is a uh, thousand watt power. So you have to uh, uh, set those value in the uh, controller setting. So here's how to do that. To do that. Um, you go in the controller setup and then you will find the uh, charge setting. And then in that menu you have um, charge enable and you can choose yes or no. If you choose yes, it means that when you will connect the charger to the controller, uh, the uh, charging process will start. So you want to set it to yes. And then if you go to the uh, next option, which is charge cutoff, this is the uh, maximum voltage at which, uh, at which the uh, charger will start to uh, lowering the power and it will top off all the charge of the battery. So uh, this value on the uh, next controller is usually 83 volt. So you set it to 83 volt, just like that. Couples of press like that, and then 83. Okay. And now the supply current. So your power supply is not a 74 volt power supply, uh, just like the voltage of your battery. It's lower voltage, and you have to indicate that to the controller. So in that case, uh, this is a 48 volt power supply and have to uh, power about 1000 watt, which means that uh, you will have to set about 20 amp of current. So you set that value to 20, just like that. And then the charging current, this is the current that will go from the controller to the battery. Um, in fact, the battery is 74 volt and if you supply 1000 watt, it's 1000 divided by um, uh, 74 volt, uh, which is about, uh, I will say, you can, you can put a little higher current, it will anyway uh, top the maximum. You can set to 14 or 15, volt, uh, 15 amp. And now the second screen is uh, supply V-drop. So this setting is a special setting that uh, indicates to the controller uh, what kind of, of uh, voltage uh, drop the charger will have when the power will be at the maximum. Uh, in fact, usually the uh, default value of 1.19 uh, is okay, you can leave that value as is. And then there's the uh, charger invert, uh, usually on that installation uh, the uh, selection is yes. So that's all for the uh, charging setting of the adapter controller. Okay, so once the battery setting are done, the next thing to do is the uh, throttle setting. So um, you will have to indicate to the controller uh, the uh, limit of the, uh, the throttle that you have. So it will respond better to uh, the uh, command that you do on the throttle. So the first thing to do is to go in the menu and you will select controller setup. And then you will go to the, in that menu to the last option, which is called calibration. Okay, and you will go on the second menu. This is the first of the three menu. You will go on the second menu with the uh, down arrow. And you will select the second option, which is throttle limit. Okay, now you will see that if you move the throttle, you will see 
down to the stream, a little vertical bar. And it, will, it should move, if the throttle is wired correctly, it should move from the left to the right once you twist the throttle like that. Okay? What you have to do is select the voltage for the uh, minimum limit that is just a little bit above this lower value that the throttle uh, on the stock position is. You want to avoid that uh, the throttle is adjusted uh, really too close to tap limit and that the bike, if the throttle have just a little mechanical failure and the bike goes uh, by itself. <laughs> okay, so the first thing to do, you will play with the arrow and you will see that um, if you go on the, uh, uh, the up arrow, you will be able to adjust the lower limit. So you will see the voltage down to the menu and select the uh, uh, arrow up and then you will be able to move it on the left or on the right using the left or right arrow. So just select the voltage that is just a little bit above that lower limit that the vertical uh, little line is. And then you will go wide open and that little bar is on the right and you will press up again and then the setting will change for the uh, highest limit. So you will select uh, the limit that is just under that, uh, uh, that little bar, just uh, on, a little bit on the left. And then this will make sure that the throttle and the controller are set properly to respond and have no uh, safety uh, uh, problem. Okay, now that the uh, throttle limit has been set, you'll have to do the same for the brake limit. So here's how. What you have to do, you're still in the uh, calibration menu. You will go on the second menu after that. You will see throttle limit again. This is the second menu. And then you go on the third menu. And you will see brake limit, which is the first option on the top. You will select it. And then you will have the same graphic menu and we'll now use the brake and you will do exactly the same so you have the little vertical bar down to the, the graphic and you will make sure that the first voltage that you're setting the same way for, that you did, did for the uh, throttle the, fir the, the first thing you need to adjust is make sure that the uh, first minimum voltage is above that uh, brake limit so, Let's say that the vertical bar is completely on the left. We'll make sure that the graph is beginning just a little bit, I would say about a fifth of the, of the uh, total width uh, above the, the, uh, the lower limit. So if uh, you have, let's say, uh, uh, about the equivalent of zero volt when the uh, brake limit is on uh, uh, static position, you will adjust the voltage using the arrow and make sure that the graph is beginning right after on the right. So this is the lower part of the slope. And then you will have to do the same for the high limit and make sure that the high limit, uh, the voltage of the high limit is just on the left than the maximum, uh, 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 the maximum that the little vertical bar is going on the right. So, if you click the brake like that, you will see the vertical bar is completely on the right. You just make sure that the voltage at which the slope is at the maximum, the corresponding voltage is just a little bit on the left from that position. In that case, this is about 3.8 volt. This is just okay. Okay, now the next thing is uh, the auto detection of the motor. That controller has the uh, capability to uh, learn how the motor is and to find the right tuning for that kind of motor winding and electrical parameters. So to achieve that, you will go in the menu and find the controller setup. And then you will go on the second option, which is called auto detection. And now this is important. When you will do that, the motor will begin to spin. There's two different cases. First, it spins on the right direction and the other spins backward. If it spins backward, as you can see, 
the pedal are spinning like that. So just make sure to not, not be in the same path of the pedal. And then if that happens, you will have to make a change to make sure that the wheel spin in the right direction. So you, you will go uh, on the uh, option that is just uh, uh, below the uh, uh, auto detection, which is called direction. And there is a sign which is positive or negative. If it's by default negative and the motor is spin backward, you will have to select positive. And now, when you will make the auto detection, the motor will spin on the right direction. So let's do the auto detection. To do that, you will have to twist the throttle fully. So I will select auto detection, and now it's explained. You will have to make sure that the wheel is suspended in the air, not in contact with anything. You want to have the wheel spinning freely. And then you twist the throttle fully. What will happen? The, mo the motor will spin the wheel just slower, with a low speed, and it will analyze how the motor is. And then, after a couple of seconds, uh, nearly a minute, the motor will spin pretty fast. This is normal. It will just try to find different uh, setting and different speed. And then, after a minute or two, maybe three, the motor will stop, and if everything was fine, you will see successful on the screen and then you raise the throttle and everything is fine. So let's do it and you will see. So turn the throttle wide open and now you see the motor is finding the right direction and then it spins slowly. Don't release the throttle, keep it until the test is done completely. By the way, if the motor is really noisy, vibrating a lot, just start it again. And if it doesn't spin, just give it some help, spin the wheel by the hand slowly until it uh, engages and starts rotating by itself. In a few seconds it should spin faster. has been done. Uh, you might have to do it a few times depending on the motor that you have until it runs really smoothly. So now we can consider it is done. Okay now it's time to adjust the uh, speed monitor. So to achieve that we will go in the parameter that is called speed ratio. This will indicate the right speed according to the wheel, uh, the wheel speed. So what you do is you go on the uh, controller setup and then the very first uh, option on the top, it's called speed ratio. And you have to enter a number. And that number is calculated by multiplying the number of poles of the motor. Generally, those motors are 23 poles. Okay, so what you will do is you will measure the circumference of the wheel in millimeter. You will get about 2000, something like that. And you divide that number by the number of poles. In that case, it's 23. 
and you will get a number in about 80 or 85, something ish like that. So you will enter that number here and the speed that your monitor display will be the right speed of the bicycle. Okay, so when you open the controller, you will notice that you have echo that is written on the top. You can change these are the uh, performance profiles. So you can change these by pressing the up arrow and you will see it go from echo to normal to boost. If you want to modify each of these settings, you just go in the menu, select second option, power profile, and here's the numbers. So the number that you will see is um, the, uh, the first one is the battery current, uh, the uh, phase current, the um, uh, regen current, which is the braking force, and then the maximum speed, which is SP, uh, SKP, uh, PH, and then the acceleration. The last number is the rate at which the bike will accelerate. If you select nothing, uh, like the uh, little uh, uh, horizontal line, uh, it will just have no limit, so full acceleration. Okay, now this is time for the uh, fine-tuning. And uh, we will begin with the uh, throttle uh, linearity calibration. So here's what we will do. Go on the menu and in the uh, controller setup. And then we will go to the calibration, just like we did for the uh, calibration of the range of the throttle. But you will select uh, the third option in the second menu of the calibration, which is throttle linear. You want to have this option at linear. So what you will do is you will indicate to the controller uh, the, the, the linearity of that throttle. Okay? So once you're in, you're in that menu, you will see slowly push the throttle and press escape for exit. So you want just to turn it on very stable speed, uh, not too fast, not too slow. I will show you what's the best. And if it doesn't work, it will indicate you and you will have to just try it again. Okay, so I will do it. And you will see numbers. All right, so it worked. So when it is done, you will see a graphic showing you the linearity of the troll. And it's very, uh, nice flat uh, uh, slope so you just press the arrow for saving and now the troll is uh, learned by the controller so a really small amount of travel will spin the, the wheel really uh, at a low speed and medium and high so it will follow exactly uh, the position of your hand okay now there's a second menu for the brake so this is called brake linear. In that case, uh, this is just an on-off switch. So there is no uh, variation uh, in the adjustment. So you would just skip uh, that part of the adjustment. Okay, after that, you will want to uh, select the uh, temperature sensor. In fact, that motor has temperature sensor and the controller needs to know that. So you will have to select the right temperature sensor. In the case of that motor, which is the MXUS version 2, this is a KTY83. Uh, so to select it, you go in the setup and then select advanced setting. And then you will go down to the first menu and go to the second menu out of five. And then you will see motor T sensor and you will have uh, already uh, KTY 81 you want to select the KTY 83 and then what you have to do is uh, indicate what is the temperature limit uh, for that motor to protect it against overheating so you go on this, uh, the third menu in the uh, out of five and then you will have T limit this is the maximum limit you want to allow the motor to work uh, otherwise the controller will just reduce the power. So you will select 140 degrees Celsius. Okay. The reason is that at that temperature, this is the right trade-off between 
overheating and taking too long to cool down and uh, to have too low power. If you set a uh, temperature sensor that is too low, the problem is that it will kick in uh, too easily and uh, if you set it to 100 degrees Celsius, for example, uh, uh, it will easily reach uh, in uh, less than one minute and will have reduced power. So for that motor, 140 degrees Celsius is by experience uh, the uh, optimum value for that kind of motor. Okay, now it's time for the performance fine tuning. Very interesting part. So before attempting any adjustment right now, you want to set the overspeed parameter to zero. Here's how to do that. Again, you go in the controller setup, and then you will go on the second menu of that, which is called advanced setting. And in the advanced setting, you have five pages. You will find the second page and the second option, which is called OVS timing. This is overspeed timing. Just want to make sure that it's set to zero, zero degree. In that case, it's already zero. So next thing to do is to adjust the angle core. So this is the very first performance setting that you will do. So to do that, you twist the throttle until you get about 15 km per hour. 10 to 15 is best. And to know that, you will have the speed that is displayed down to that page in the advanced setup, page one. Down to that page, we'll have S on the uh, uh, lower left corner of the screen. And this is the speed that you, uh, your wheel is spinning at. So you want to adjust it to about 10 to 15. What we will do is carefully feel the vibration of the uh, motor and hear the sound that it's doing. This is very important. What you want is to have the really smooth rotation with the less vibration and the faster speed for a given position of the throttle. Okay, so we'll do it and I'll show you how it looks like. So, I'll spin about 10 kilometer. Just try to keep it about the same speed. I know this is not very really easy, but with experience, you'll get it. Okay, it's about 17 km per hour. That's okay. And now you will play with the angle core value. So you have the minus position or the positive position. So you will play with the number until, you see, it just, I didn't touch the throttle. I just play with that speed. The motor just lose speed and vibrate a lot. This is not the right value. So go the other direction and go back to the number that you had. And you will see the motor spin the right speed again. And now go completely in the negative if it has been in the negative area of the adjustment. And go full in again. And then your motor is just vibrating again, showing you that you did both end of the right adjustment and you have to go right in the middle of that where the motor vibrates less. Just like that. You see? No vibration. You hear the, uh, the, the, the uh, base frequency is it's now nearly inexistent. And the motor is spinning fast. And now, until you find the right number, it should be okay. And now, when it's done, just stop the wheel and that adjustment is done. Another trick, if you go with the bike and go on the road, try to also look at the motor temperature. You want to have the lowest temperature as possible for that, uh, the, the best setting that you have. This is another way, fine, fine tuning. So that's all for the angle core. IND timing. This is quite similar to the uh, uh, angle core, except that it's at higher speed. So we'll do it. Uh, the speed that we had the uh, angle core was about 10 to 15 km per hour, and now we will do it for about 35 to 50. So let's say 50 km per hour. So we'll just 
uh, select that menu, and the ND, IND timing is in the uh, advanced setting, and then you, you have the angle core on the first menu of the advanced setup, and IND timing is the third option in that page. So it's a microsecond value, and uh, when you did the um, adjustment of the auto detection, uh, it already entered the numbers. It, this is normal, but you will have to modify that number now, the same as we did for the angle core. So let's do it. It will be a little bit noisier because it's 50 kilo per hour, but I'll try to speak louder and it uh, should not be a problem. Okay, so let's do it. Carefully look at the speed of the lower from the left. So try to get rid of the vibration using the IND timing value. So try to find the right area where the sound is smoother and more spin the faster. That is, it's about 558 microseconds. You should have value maybe slightly different. This is normal, just find the smoothest radiation of the motor, and that's all. Okay, uh, let's adjust the power timing. Power timing, in short, is uh, the acceleration it will have at a given speed, about half the maximum speed of your bike. So, um, to do that, you will go to about uh, 50 km per hour, and um, again, adjust the, uh, to have the less vibration on the motor and the, uh, the, uh, the faster speed. But, uh, to give you just an example, the, the average number will be between 0.3 to 0.5. If your motor is faster, it will be a lower number. If your motor is a lower speed, higher torque, this value should be higher than 0.5. So we'll do it now. About 50 km power. And now, After all, we'll do between 0 0.5. Uh, if you want to have the right setting, just go on the road and go from about half of your maximum speed, crank up the throttle, and find the number at which you will give, it will give you the maximum acceleration and that will be the perfect tuning. Now it's time for the most interesting adjustment for the performance of your bike. This is called the uh, overspeed timing. So it's an adjustment that will give a little boost in speed of your motor. So, the way to do that, you go in the advanced setup, the second page of the advanced setup, and the second uh, choice, which is OVS timing. And then you have a degree, a value that is expressed in degree. So what we will do now is twist the throttle fully, wide open, the motor will spin at maximum speed, and then we will increase that number. Usually it's between 4 to 5, you can go up to 7, but this is very rare. Uh, optimum value are obtained at 4 to 5 usually. This will give you up to about 30% speed gain from your normal speed. So I will show you that and you will see it's all a bit loud, but uh, it's fine. Okay, so and now we'll start with more speed. Value was four degrees. So you 
keep that value and enjoy.